Welcome to Toy Poloi. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Poloi and part two of the restoration of this vintage Palatoy Death Star that was very kindly donated to me by Jules Burt from the Jules Burt YouTube channel. I'll put a link to his channel in the description of this video. Now in part one you saw me sort of basically get to grips with all of the cardboard parts of this playset which let's face it is the bulk of the playset. It is mainly made out of these sort of large pieces of relatively thick cardboard and over the years these uh, had got very damaged. A lot of the print had started to delaminate from the cardboard itself and there were tears and rips all over the place. So I spent pretty much the entire part of that restoration carefully gluing everything back together. And at the end of that video I put all of the sort of pieces that were a little bit sort of less than flat under some weights and uh, have left it for about a month to try and flatten out all the pieces. And I have to say most of that has worked. If we look at some of these pieces that were a little bit on the bowed side, there's still a little curve to them, but overall they are a lot better. And I think they're going to be as good as they're going to get. Now, before I do any sort of more work on this playset, I actually want to give it one more final sort of going over because I notice after everything had dried, there were a few areas that I'd missed. Really, that's just because it's such a large playset to deal with. You can see this is a very large panel. I've re-glued so many parts of it, but I can still see a few little areas like this one where there is a little bit of delamination going on. So I'm just going to do one final sort of pass over the entire playset to do the final bits of gluing. Again, I'm going to be using the EVA glue just to stick these last bits down. Once that's done, it would be nice to sort of start constructing the playset and see how well it holds together and also put some of the sort of plastic pieces in place. First up though we are going to repair these uh, bits that I missed on the first pass on this restoration because I think it's best to do everything in a sort of sensible order and getting the car all done is certainly the first uh, thing that we need to get finished. So that's all the sort of bits I missed re-glued. There's only a few areas. Sometimes on a project like this, because it's so large scale, you can just miss pieces as you go by. So it's always best just to give it a little double check before you sort of get on to the next stage. Now on this uh, background plate, which also turns into the floor, there are a couple of bits of a reflective material to make the sort of uh, Death Star tower bit sort of uh, look like it's much deeper. Uh, and on one side, you can see this bit has sort of been stuck in the right place. On the other side, sadly, this uh, reflective material. I'm not really sure what's happened. It's sort of, it's either come away or been sort of moved. It's actually completely 180 round the wrong way and stuck in the wrong place. But I have tried to remove this and whatever it's been stuck down with uh, is so firmly stuck on. All I'm going to end up doing is sort of damaging the print underneath. So I'm just going to have to leave that as is. I, I would really like to remove it and sort of move it around, but I just don't want to damage the floor anymore. So for now, I'm just going to sort of accept that that is been stuck in the wrong place and that's just part of this playset. It uh, would be nice to fix it, but I'm not going to bother. Likewise over here, this print has got a little bit of damage to it. There's some tearing. Now I have found some scans online. I could sort of print out a section and stick it on, but I never really find that a very satisfactory thing to do. And for my sort of collecting, I much prefer this sort of wabby sabby idea where things have already had a life. So this bit of damage here, I'm just going to leave it as is and sort of accept it as part of this playset's 40 years of sort of being played with and sort of being uh, stored away. Uh, I know some people would want to sort of fix that up, but for me, I'm perfectly happy having that little bit of damage left on the floor area. I think it looks quite nice and it sort of fits with the age of this playset. Now the Palatoy Death Star playset comes with a selection of uh, plastic parts, most of which are sort of often missing. Uh, and there are supposed to be five of these clips. You're supposed to get two uh, guns. Now these are just standard X-wing guns. It also comes with a little trash compactor chute, which is made out of two parts. You can see there and those sort of just 
gently clipped together. And then the gunner chair at the top is made out of this vac formed plastic. And it's also supposed to have a vac formed sort of cockpit cover. Now that is probably the hardest bit to find. I've been trying to get one off eBay and the last one I saw went for about 150 pounds. And then there's one recently that I'm still bidding on, but the price is just way out of my sort of acceptable price range. So for the moment, I'm not going to bother trying to find that. I know there are people out there who do make replacement ones, but I've yet to actually sort of manage to track those down. It could be in the end, I actually make a little uh, wooden sort of thing that fits in here that sort of mimics the uh, original shape and I'll get that vac formed myself. But for now, I'm not actually going to worry about it. All I want to do is get the place that's sort of up and sort of back together and see what it looks like. These bits need a good clean. So I'm just going to clean them with some hot soapy water, not too hot uh, the water on this one, because this is a vac formed thing. If you put that back in some very hot water, it's liable to distort and sort of uh, go back to its original shape of a flat piece of plastic. So I'm going to put this in sort of maybe some lukewarm uh, soapy water just so I can clean that out. The playset should also come with six action figure stands, uh, but you can buy replacements of the stands, which are very close to those original. Now I buy from a, a place called Star Stands. I'll put a link to uh, the eBay auctions where I get these uh, in the description of this video. And you can see you can buy these stands, which do look remarkably like the original ones. This is actually a pack of 10. The playset should only come with six, uh, but I bought a whole pack of 10 because I use these all the time for displaying my figures. They're really nice and they're really easy to get. He makes a whole load of other different stands as well. So do check out some of his other auctions if you want to get stands for your other figures and lines. Now the playset is uh, supposed to come with a set of five of these clips to hold everything together. You get two parts of this clip. Uh, they are both the same and they sort of interlock and they clip around the cardboard to hold uh, parts of it in place. I was lucky enough to buy one of these missing ones off eBay. I saw a listing for this. I think I paid a grand total of £10, including postage for a pair of the clips. So uh, that was a pretty good buy. Uh, they do turn up on eBay pretty often in the UK, varying in price, sometimes sort of up near the £20 mark. But if you were uh, wait long enough you'll get one for cheap. These were the same clips that were used on the Action Force HQ as well although those are a different colour so if you're desperate you can get those ones they're in a sort of a slight sort of grey brown colour. Black is the ones that, uh, that go with the Death Star uh, but there are places to buy 3D printed versions of them so I went onto the Shapeways website and they have a file that you can purchase and get them to print uh, and I, the problem with this place is that it's only set up in the US so uh, to get the item printed and posted to the UK. This has cost me about £20. I've yet to actually look at the sort of quality of uh, the print. So we're going to open up this box and we we'll compare it uh, and see if it's as good as an original one. I'll just see what they're like. I've, I've actually never had anything printed by them before and this was uh, sort of worth the risk. As you can see it's actually quite a big box and it's incredibly light but uh, the postage on it, yeah, it cost me nearly £20 to get this sent to the UK. Let's just open this up and we'll see what the uh, quality of the clip is like. Hopefully it will be good. Just a quick little cut along there. Let's see what's inside. I'm going to take that out because I assume it's a packing label with my address on it. It just says order uh, item uh, Death Star clip. And we've got a lot of bubble wrap. And here is my 3D printed item in a little baggie there. So that is it. So you can see it's a recreation of the clip. I think I'm going to do a little bit of trimming and we'll, and, uh, we'll test this and see how well it works. Right, I've just uh, cut the two parts apart so we can actually take a look at them and see how well they work together. This has been printed, I think, using sort of a powder technique because the finish on it is fairly sort of matte and it's quite rough. Uh, they feel reasonable quality. I would say they do feel like they're going to break quite easily. There's a little bit too thin really. There's not quite enough plastic going on but I think they will do the job. Let's try and uh, stick those two together and see if they clip together. Oh yeah they do clip okay. Yeah it just I think the, the overall finish of them it doesn't feel particularly nice in the hand. It's it's a very strange sort of rough coating to it. If you compare it to the originals these are lovely and smooth and got loads of flex to them. You can you feel like you can really bend these I have to say, I don't think I would want to do that too much on these. They feel like they're going to snap already. So uh, yeah, I think the quality is okay. 
I'm not amazingly impressed by them, but uh, certainly they should do the job. And if you don't have any of these clips, they look like they will work just as well. Uh, they are maybe, I'm going to say everything on them is just a bit too sharp. This uh, The original ones have got some nice curves and gentle slopes, whereas you can see this is fairly simple design, uh, really sort of simplified down. So it's all sort of sharp edges and sharp corners. So they don't really match. They're not going to, certainly not going to fool anyone. If someone got an original one of these and compared it to a 3D print, I think you're very easy to see that that is nothing like an original one. But let's give them a go and we'll see how well they work inside the Death Star. And now is a good time to get the Death Star constructed. It actually is a very big playset, too big really to sort of fit in my filming area. So I'll do the best I can. You can see I've sort of reached the extents of my filming area, but we'll just sort of soldier on. So the first thing you've got to do is obviously unfold the bottom section. So I've got it unfolded here. The seam or the sort of uh, fold is along the middle there. And then there are two main wall sections that join together. So you fold these out and there are slots sort of located on the sort of either side and they sort of well sort of cross over into each other so we've got the other one here and this one slots over the top of that one it's a very nice construction i think they've done a very good job on how they sort of uh, piece this together it's a very clever uh, bit of I'm going to say paper engineering, although this is actually sort of cardboard, but you can see these two pieces slot together and it makes quite a nice sort of midsection and that you have to line up. I think I've actually got that around the wrong way. Let's rotate that around. That you line up with sort of where the mirror is on the bottom uh, and all the pieces of the wall sort of match what's underneath them. If we rotate the entire place around, you can see here uh, that this is the side of the trash compactor. So that lines up with this wall here because we have a trash compactor floor. It's, it's a very big playset. I'll get some of the other pieces and we can now start slotting those in as well. I think next up we actually do the uh, trash compactor area. So I'm just going to rearrange this so you can see this is the trash compactor and it does actually work. There is a sort of a, a trash compactor bit that sort of moves around. So we have this section and we have to slot this in. There's a gap here. I'm going to fold these little pieces over and slot this wall in and then you can actually uh, compact the trash compactor. So we piece that through there, just make sure they've not caught on the other side. So you have this section that moves back and forth so you can crush people in the trash compactor area here. And then there's a floor to go above it, which is this one. So you can see trash compactor and then a sort of normal piece. So we just slot that in like so. And there's a matching piece of floor that goes on the other side. So we rotate the entire playset round. As I say this is really rather a large playset, just slightly too big for my filming area, but we'll sort of make do. So here's the other floor piece, and that slots in on the opposite side. This is probably the most awkward piece to go in, and it's the bit that had the most damage. I can see why it has the most damage, because uh, it, as I say, it's just a very hard to get it to sort of sit in place. So like a child doing this, that's why it has these sort of major rips on it. But again, we just have to sort of slot these in. There's lots of little uh, cardboard holes that you can see, and that's where you line the, everything up to. So if we line it all up, make sure everything's in place. I don't want to tear the, the cardboard. I'll take that around and we've got this sort of very flimsy piece where there was a lot of damage that hooks in the top there and then there's a plastic clip will hold the bottom part of that in but we'll put the plastic clips in last so that's that bit we'll rotate it round then we've got the gantry to go in this gantry is also a very flimsy piece just because they've cut so many holes in it and you have to bend it into this sort of hexagon shape and then that sort of slots into these two holes either side Again, it's not the easiest of things to sort of get in place and I can see why this gets up so damaged. So I'll we'll slot that side in if we can. Then we have to sort of bend it around a bit and slot this side in. Just, I don't know, if the cardboard was brand new it might feel a little bit sort of easier to do but with this old cardboard it does feel like you're going to ruin things. Let's see if I can slot that one under. There we go. I think that's in feeling pretty sturdy. Then the final piece is this cardboard ring that goes on the top which holds the uh, gunner's chair. And again, hopefully that will just slot in place up here. So that's all of the cardboard bits put together. Let's get the uh, plastic pieces out. We'll clip everything down onto the base. We'll put the trash compactor chute in and we'll put the gunner chair on the top and see how it all holds together. Let's put in one of the original clips uh, to hold the bottom of uh, the base onto the main part of the Death Star. So as I say, these come in two parts. And the idea is you 
sort of clip them through the, the uh, wall part of the cardboard. You put the two bottom clips in place like so, one either side. Let me just get that one in. And then you push these through the, the hole in the wall of the cardboard and clip them together. Which is like so. And that actually holds it really quite firmly. So that's one of the original clips. I'm going to rotate this PlayStation round again. We'll use the 3D printed one now and see how well that works. So again, I can clip these under, which is not the easiest thing to do. Let's move that out of the way. Like so. I'm going to line up the wall. We'll push these through. This place is a little bit distorted, so it's not the easiest of thing to work with. Push those clips through. And we'll clip that in place. There we go. So that's the 3D printed one. It does actually work reasonably well. It's uh, sort of gone in place quite nicely. And now it's there. I'd say you wouldn't really worry that it was a 3D print. It doesn't look quite as nice as the original one, I say, as I sort of mentioned, but it certainly does the job. So we have a few more of these clips to put in place and then uh, we'll start on uh, getting the trash compactor chute in. Here is the trash compactor chute and really that's a very simple one to fit in. There's just two square holes. Uh, this drops down into the trash compactor. You can see if you go through this hole, there is the trash compactor and then there's just a hallway over this side. So we just have to slot this one in place fairly straightforward as you can shift the cardboard about and there you go that's in place that would certainly be a very easy piece to uh, reconstruct out of some two millimeter styrene you can buy a uh, polystyrene sheets in black i think that would be a very straightforward thing to construct so it's just a few sort of uh, 90 degree and 45 degree angles and you could cut and stick something that would work very nicely there i may come back to do that uh, but as of the moment as i've got an original one i don't need to worry about it then at the very top of this playset you have the gunner chair which is this bit of vac form plastic that has two x-wing guns that you just sort of I think you're just sort of supposed to drop them in place. They don't really seem to fit. I think they just sort of rest. There's a slight little nodule there that enables them to hold sort of, but as this is a vac formed bit of plastic, it's not particularly accurate. And then that just drops on there. And as I say, there's supposed to be a clear bit of uh, vac formed plastic on the top of that, which I've currently still not been able to track down an original or a reproduction one. So I think I'm going to have to come back to that. I'm going to make a wood sort of mould and then get something vac formed that uh, sits on top of that. But for now, I think this will have to do. And there we have it. That is the Palatoid Death Star all back together, bar a few sort of minor issues that I think I will come back to in a future video if I can work out a fix or if I can find some replacements for the missing pieces. But overall, the place is really very sturdy now. Uh, getting all of the cardboard sort of repaired and fixed up was the main problem with this Death Star. And actually, by the time you put all of the clips in place that hold it together, it's now really very firm. So the work that I spent uh, fixing up the cardboard was time well spent because it uh, really does make the whole station nice and firm. I do like some of the features on this playset, especially this little uh, trash compactor where you can sort of crush figures uh, sort of with, between two bits of cardboard. There is an opening door on this side as well, so they can escape. But actually getting figures through the uh, plastic chute that's here is a bit awkward. You can see I can sort of push Chewbacca through, but he's a bit of a squeeze. So uh, although it does work, it's not the easiest of things to do. And I'm sure that's why this playset gets broken so easily. Apart from the fact it's made from cardboard, some of the features don't work particularly well. Although they look nice, it's just that uh, by the time you push the figure through that a few times, your chances are you've either broken the plastic or ripped some of the cardboard. Here you can see the mirrored floor that's at the end of the sort of the main Death Star tower that runs up to the gunner chair. And that's where the uh, reflective bit of uh, surface should be. As you can see, because it's not stuck in quite the right position, it does look a little bit odd. Uh, I'm really not sure what I could do about that. It's just glued on too well. And anything I do to remove that bit of silver is just going to damage the place a bit more. So as I say, I'm just going to live with that. I think it looks perfectly acceptable. It's a shame that it's like that, but uh, sometimes it's worth leaving things not quite perfect if you risk damaging the item more by trying to fix it. And with this playset, I think that's definitely what's going to happen. So I'm just going to leave those silver bits like they are. 
And that's it for this part of this restoration, although I will be coming back to it because I do want to make some sort of cockpit glass to go over this gunner chair. It's just a shame to leave that with nothing. But for now, I think the whole playset displays very nicely. I do need to say a massive thank you to Jules Burt. Please check out his YouTube channel. I will put a link in the description, so uh, go and follow that and give him a subscribe. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, then make sure to subscribe to my channel and tap the bell to be notified each time I upload a new video. And thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Toy Ploy. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Ploy on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. As a little bonus piece to this restoration, one thing I was asked a lot after putting the first video up was to give out some measurements of the playset so people could have a go at making their own using the scans that are available online. So uh, this little bonus section is going to be me sort of measuring every piece as I take it apart and uh, then you can use those to make your own or have a go at making your own. So let's start with the top disc here. I have a tape measure. So I will give you the measurements in centimetres uh, so you can uh, use these to make your own. I'm going to line that up with the top notch and that is exactly uh, 15.1 centimetres. Then we move on to the next bit, which is the gangway. So if I can remove this gangway. And I'm going to measure from the top to the bottom of this. You'll just have to work out the other measurements yourself. Uh, it will be easier to do that way. So this is 26.9 centimetres. Here is the trash compactor piece. Now this is not so easy to measure. So I'm going to measure basically along the length of the hinge and you can work out the rest yourself. So that hinge is 20.5 centimetres. Using my cutting mat as a guide, we can measure this piece, which is particularly awkward. I'm going to measure from the very bottom of uh, the sort of pillar to the top part here. And that's the only distance I can see that's easy to measure. So I'm going to line this up on my cutting mat and that works out at 28.4 centimetres. Now we move on to the two walls, which will be exactly the same in height. So I'm going to just measure them from the tallest point to the lowest point, which seems to be uh, from this point here to the very bottom. And we will measure that. And that is 29.2 centimetres. And then the last measurement I can take is the one across the very base. So I can tell you that is 59.8 centimetres. Those are all the measurements you should need to uh, be able to make your own version of this Death Star. If I've missed any, then I apologise, but uh, I'm not doing this again because I've just been asked too many times about the measurements on this. That should be enough for everybody to have a go at making their own. Good luck. Hope it helps. See you in the next video.